So uh, it's just about recording. This little mink came running through camp. He was running right at my feet, and he went in the water somewhere, and I lost him. Probably swam across. So this is our island for the night. Uh, post up on this little guy. Kirk's is right across the river. Uh, we got permission uh, from a lady to camp on the island here. It's a pretty good little spot to kind of give you the panoramic. Adam and Keith are right over here. We're kind of packing up. Got about 30 minutes. We need to be over at Kirk's to have a breakfast and uh, meet with, with Proctor and some of the people talk about getting us out on, on Friday. But uh, yeah, we knew it was a good thing. We showed up and uh, this picnic table was washed into a tree. So Squirrel and I rest, you know, wrestled it out. And now we have a camp table. So this is how we do it with the River Kings. You know, we have tables uh, on islands waiting for us when we get there. What do you think? We jumped in the kayaks and had to paddle upstream about half a mile to the confluence of the Greenbrier and the New Rivers. From there, we would ferry back across to Kirk's restaurant where we were planning to meet Proctor, Jim Worrells, and a couple of friends to iron out our shuttle. It was a little more than the boys bargained for this early in the morning, but there's pancakes at Kirk's. And well, we had nothing better to do. National, take your kayak for a walk once again. Many of you may have seen my training video I put out on this. Here we are doing it again. Finally, after a long upstream paddle, we met at Kirk's, where Proctor had assembled a small army of volunteers to help us with the shuttle. And as we promised, there's pancakes. Now that's a big plate of pancakes. Proctor said I made a pile as big as I was. I knew I couldn't eat it all, but it didn't stop me from ordering. We're here with Jerry and the guys here in uh, Hinton, uh, working out the shuttle. We've got uh, some gentlemen that are gonna help us. Uh, what's your name? Gio. Jim. Jean. Jean and? Gio. Jim. And Proctor. And Proctor, yeah. yeah. And you? Jim. Yeah, Jim, Jim, Jean, and Proctor. So there we go. They're going to help our shuttle. <laughs> they're going to help our shuttle out on Friday. And uh, super good people. We really appreciate everything they're doing. And, uh, this guy he is a rock star. Yeah, he's making it happen. Appreciate it again. After breakfast, we charged batteries and just hung around. It was nice to have a good morning off. Greg found his next automobile. Brian. And well, then this Here we are happened. a little gift for Brian. Squirrel, bring it on in. See the presentation here. Oh yeah, he's official now. We got you a helmet, Brian. You're safe. <laughs> Let's all give him a hand, guys. We all operator approved. Then Squirrel and I went back over to the island at the confluence, just in time for Matt and the boys to show up in their truck. It was 12.30 when they showed up, and it was really good to see them. Nothing beats seeing familiar faces in a faraway place. My wife even sent a new batch of Rice Krispie treats. We got them loaded up and made the ferry across to Kirk's. They were a little wobbly. This was going to be an interesting afternoon. We met up, had a quick lunch, and then shoved off. It was 2 o'clock in the afternoon and we had some miles to go. We took a small tour by the island we stayed at last night. We named it The Strip. It was just right. And it even came with a picnic table.
the group was big now. Anytime you make changes to the group on a trip, it changes the whole feel. The first five of us had been tested on the way down the river. The new four had to get up to speed. We had been sorting things out for the last few days. We had our game together. I would have to rely on the guys to help the new four out. That's David, 17 years old. He's not new to kayaking, but he's never dealt with the beast. And he's in a 17 foot sea kayak. Jacob, keep your paddle in the water. That's Jacob in the orange boat. He's 14 years old. I don't know of another 14 year old I would take on a trip like this. And he's brand new. At this point in his life, he's got about 30 minutes in a kayak and never on moving water. I gave these two some special attention. I threw them out front and had them making decisions early. We were going to be at Brooks Falls in less than four miles. They had some learning to do. We had cheated the beast before, and you can bet she was waiting for us down here. She was going to be out for vengeance and to collect her toll. David was cool, calm, and collected, and Jacob was a natural. I would try to find a way to give them a fighting chance. I just hoped they'd make it. I would put my lead team of Squirrel and Greg up front. Then the three new guys, Jacob, David, and Matt, try to get them through before the beast knew what happened. Then Yackleberry and Brian. Chris was a surfer and he knew big water well. I'd keep him in the back with me to pick up the stragglers. And as we sat there staring down to the beast, Brian got quiet and serious. He waited over a year for this moment. You could see his flood of emotions of fear, anticipation, doubt, determination, all turn into one singular focus.
hard. She had taken down Matt and David. Look at you! I was looking for that white helmet! Matt was in front! Matt! Matt was the swimmer! What happened? Mine went. No, bro, I flipped right at the end. I had it rocking it out. And then, I just jumped in. I wanted to cool down. <laughs> <laughs> you know How did the beast taste? The beast tastes very good. Like Kool-Aid. Uh, was it big or is it small? What'd you feel like? <laughs> <laughs> He's swimming. <laughs> All right, redemption has come in the form of a dry <laughs> Brook Falls running Brian Hubbard. I'd like to say we were all happy for him, but nobody was happier than Brian. Then a new water warrior was born. Jacob had aced that rapid. He looked different than he did 30 minutes ago. He's looking like he's paddled for years. This one was made to battle the beast. Before the trip, Yakoberry told me he wanted to experience swimming in a rapid. And when the beast took him down unexpectedly, he got that chance. He also wanted to experience the camaraderie of being with a group of guys, part of a group of guys, that would drop everything and help a brother in need. Well, buddy, this is what it feels like. Chris has traveled the world surfing, so I thought it wouldn't be right if we came out on this river and didn't surf the kayaks. Naturally, he took to it quickly and really enjoyed it. For Yackleberry, it was a ledge hole that got him. He took his eyes off the river for the first time in 100 miles, and the beast made him pay. Undeterred by the swim, he decided he wanted a shot at surfing too. He looked totally relaxed, patted in there and got right in the pocket. It was good to see him enjoying the river. To me, he had become just one of the guys. I'd forgotten how far he'd come from five days ago. It 
It was a postcard afternoon. You really couldn't ask for better. We all told stories and made our way down the river. We filled in the new guys about what they missed. And we all talked about what lay ahead. Round a couple bends was Sandstone Falls. If you've never seen it, it looks like Middle Earth. It had been about a decade since I've been here. And all I did was get out and run the falls in my whitewater boat. I hadn't looked for a way around for nine paddlers and late and sea kayaks. Coming up on Sandstone Falls. Probably can't see it, but there's a little mist right in front of the boat. About a 25 footer over there. Really manky, some really tall vertical stuff. And then far over here on the left, we're trying to find a way to get around. So we're just gonna take this little shallow side out. If you don't know where you're going here, get out early. So we're here scouting at Sandstone Falls. Left side, we got the guys on the far bank. The right side is really chunky. It's about a 25 foot drop and uh, everything in between. So that's all a no-go. But we found this grass flat. Leads up to this little land bridge here. And we're gonna be able to stab down to see the river through the trees out there. So the portage here will probably only have to be about, I don't know, about 50 yards. This was gonna be the most dangerous thing we did all week. The potential for injury here is very high. We'd have to be on our game. I had identified a tree as a marker to lead us into the right spot. Too far left, waterfalls. Too far right, worse waterfalls. When they got close, the boys understood my concern. And the longer I stared, the more I wanted a piece of this beast. It's what I do. But I didn't have the right gear. Everything in my soul, everything in my soul wants to run this line right here, straight down, hit the roof cell, golden. But I don't have a neoprene skirt and kind of leading the trip. Something happens, everyone's trip's on the line, so we're walking it. No shame in making the right decision, but I'm just there to tell you, that's, that's what I love to do right there. I went back one more time to look at it again. And begrudgingly, I still decided to walk. But just as we were about to leave, I see Brian's crock wash over the waterfall. My first thought, where's Brian? Yeah. Not jumping in to save it. He had slipped in the stream above and jammed his toes. The beast made him pay for that redemption after all. And she wasn't done with him yet. Evening was starting to descend upon us. We had to get this portage done and get on, find a campsite. So we walked our boats the rest of the way in, looking for the route. If we did this right, it would be pretty simple. Hey, hey, super We found our little chute down to the pool below that Squirrel and I had scouted earlier. We made a little team that would pass the boats one by one, and then I would lower them to Squirrel with a rope. He would unhook them and slide them out of the way. This was probably the easiest portage I've ever done on any big trip. We never carried the boats anywhere. We just slid them on wet rocks. After getting everybody back on the water, Greg takes most of the team around the left through a rim of waterfalls 
to a side chute leading out to the main channel. While they're doing that, Squirrel, Chris, and I drug our boats closer to the main channel and run the last big rapids before we meet up in an effort to find Brian's crop. And with one last look at the falls and the fading sun, it was time to point our boats downstream and meet the guys and find a campsite. It was a fantastic rapid. about a mile downstream. Brian's toes were bruised and hurting, and his back was jarred during his fall. He needed a night's sleep in a hammock bed. So we took a small cut around this island, hoping we could find something that would work for the night. And then right on cue, the river delivers the perfect campsite. It's just what we needed, but we wouldn't be alone. Maybe Fawn ran through camp confused, scared. And I told you about Squirrel on day one, but I know none of you believe me. There you go. Squirrel has caught a baby deer trying to cross the river. And we're gonna carry him to the other side. He was having a little trouble. He was on the island looking for mama. You can hear him bleating. So he's gonna let him go up there on the bank so we can uh, not have trouble drowning there. I thought about the day as we closed it out. It's hard to sum up a day like this, but I think everyone on the trip would agree. Today was big. <laughs>